The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. I'm Harold Weinbrecht, Mayor of Cary, and this is Cary Matters, the monthly program that helps keep you informed of the issues that the town of Cary is working on. Joining me as co-host this month is Gail Adcock, who's been on the council uh, since 2007, and she's our District D representative and our Mayor Pro Tem. And Gail, we really appreciate you being here today. It's always a pleasure to be here, Harold. Great. Well. Would you like to get started and tell us what's on this month's episode? I'd be delighted to. All right. Well, Mayor, our main topic this month is managing our water supply through conservation. For the Q&A segment, we'll answer questions about irrigation backflow inspections and the town's strategic energy action plan. And in coming up, we'll chat about upcoming meetings in July so that our citizens can be involved and included. So let's talk about managing our water supply. All right. As many folks know, water is a precious resource and has been an important issue in Cary for decades. In the mid-1990s, we almost ran out of water, causing development in Cary to be significantly slowed while we waited for the new water plant to come online. It was about that time that we also realized that our per capita water consumption was rising too fast to be sustainable. We knew that if we continued per capita usage at that pace, we would need to begin planning the expansion of the new water plant shortly after it opened in 2002, which is not something we really wanted to do. So in 2000, we took the existing conservation program and added year-round alternate day watering. Since that time, we've continued to grow the program with other conservation efforts such as the Turf Buyback Back Program, the Toilet Rebate Program, which are two very popular initiatives. These policies allow us to make the best long-term use of our valuable water resources by reducing per person water consumption and prolonging the life of our water supply from Jordan Lake. Since its inception, alternate day watering has been a key factor in our successful water conservation program. Our citizens have been great at trimming peak water use, usage in the warm months when outdoor watering causes our water usage to be more than twice the typical daily use. That's right. This is important because delaying demand for more water defers the cost of very expensive, large-scale water system infrastructure upgrades. This prolongs the life of our water treatment facility and in turn postpones capital investments, saving our utility customers money. So in short, we all benefit from water conservation, both environmentally and economically. Even so, we have received inquiries about changing alternate day watering in Cary since Raleigh recently lifted their alternate day watering rules. So let's spend a little time on that. Okay. Well, it's a good idea to talk about that because we have been getting a lot of questions. And it's important to understand that Raleigh and Cary have different sources of water and water utilities, and they operate independently. Each of our communities is independent and responsible for making and enforcing community-based rules for water usage. Therefore, the action recently taken by Raleigh to lift its watering rules does not void the rules that we have adopted here in Cary, and our alternate day watering approach is continuing. However, we do share a common interest in long-range regional water supply planning with Raleigh and other nearby communities. Uh, that is correct. The Jordan Lake Regional Water Supply Partnership was created in 2009 by an agreement among 13 water systems in the Triangle region with the primary purpose of jointly planning for the future use of available water supply in Jordan Lake. 
The Jordan Lake Partnership members are Apex, Cary, Chatham County, Durham, Hillsboro, Holly Springs, Morrisville, Orange County, Orange Water and Sewer Authority, Pittsboro, Raleigh, Sanford, and Wake County. The importance of water supply planning and development on a regional basis has taken on greater urgency as the Triangle Region and the entire southeastern United States have experienced two historically severe droughts since 2001. Joint planning and development of a reliable and sustainable water supply is critical to the future success of the Triangle and our state. The Jordan Lake Partnership is developing a plan to meet the projected 2060 water supply demands in the region, as well as to meet needs in the intervening years. It is important to carry to have a regionally supported plan to meet long-term water supply needs, most likely from Jordan Lake, and to address the challenges of managing transfers between the river basins that split carry. That's right, and speaking of Jordan Lake, didn't we approve something, sort of a floating, mixing barge to help with the <laughs> water quality? What happened with that? Yes, we certainly did. It's our Jordan Lake Aeration Project, and it's under environmental review, which will hopefully be completed by next summer. So we should see an air, sea aeration during the summer of 2014. This project will greatly reduce the seasonal variability of the quality of the, lake, of the lake water we treat for drinking, which will reduce our costs and increase the reliability of our water supply. Very good. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to tackle some of the questions we've been getting from you. skill development and participation enjoy fall baseball and softball for ages 8 to 17 or participate in the fall basketball league for boys and girls ages 5 to 8 no matter the sport we have the bases covered registration starts in June contact the Cary Parks Recreation and Cultural Resources Administrative Office at 469-4061 or visit any Cary Community Center for more information the town of Cary wants you to laugh learn and play where you live this is Brian. Ah! Brian's taking a shower. Five to ten gallons of water are pouring out of Brian's shower head every minute. He's already at 40 gallons. Right. By the year 2013, it is estimated that 36 states will face serious water shortages. If people like Brian here took shorter showers, it would save 5,000 gallons per year. Save water today. For more water saving tips, go to savewatertoday.org. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. It's time now for us to address some of the questions the council's been getting from you. Gail, what do you have for us? Well, staying on the topic of water conservation and irrigation, let's talk about our policy on irrigation backflow prevention valves. Some citizens have asked why we require their backflow devices to be inspected annually. Okay, well that's a good question. The Cross Connection Backflow Prevention Program in Cary was created in November 2003 in response to both federal and state regulations. One of the goals of our program is to minimize the impact and burden to our citizens as we work to comply with the regulations of the state and federal government. Cary's program allows citizens to choose to hire a certified tester themselves or have the town's secured contractor provide the service. This service also includes minor repairs to the device during the testing process. The current fee of only $51 only recovers the cost of the town's contract for testing, minor repairs, and minor repair kits. Since its inception, there have been discussions regarding the annual test requirement. The rules governing public water systems, irrigation system backflow assemblies are required to have the regular testing and the town has defined that annually, as do most municipalities in North Carolina. 
This annual requirement is based on research conducted by the American Backflow Prevention Association and the University of Southern California Foundation for Cross-Connection Control, in which they state the failure rate of these devices ranged between 4 and 15 percent annually. This corresponds closely to the town's experience in which device failures has been consistently between the 6 and 7 percent range. In short, we believe it's the best interest of all to have these devices inspected annually since doing so helps ensure that contaminated water doesn't flow back into the drinking water. Well, I appreciate that uh, thorough response. I hope the citizens do as well. Uh, we've also received questions about what the town is doing in its operations to conserve energy. This is very timely since we approved our strategic energy action plan in June. It has an energy reduction goal with an associated energy management plan for town operations. This plan addresses the key energy using categories of town operations, which are one, water and wastewater, two, fleet, and three, buildings and streetlights. The overall goal is a 13% reduction of energy use from the projected 2020 energy estimate for town operations. Staff believes that once attained, this reduction in energy use will result in a yearly avoided cost of approximately 1.5 million, that's with an M, million wow. dollars, and an annual reduction of 7,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. We'll achieve this overall goal by pursuing several specific sub-goals related to our operations, including a 3% reduction in projected water and wastewater energy use, a 20% increase in average miles per gallon for the town fleet, a 5% reduction in fleet miles driven, and a 30% reduction in building and streetlight energy use. It is the town's intention to lead by example regarding energy efficiency and cost management with aggressive but realistic goals. Great, fantastic news. Well, coming up after the break, we're gonna give you some insights on in what's happening at Town Hall in the month of July and how you can be involved. For big shows at the best value, visit Carrie's Booth Amphitheater this summer. Whether it's the hottest music tour of the year, a symphony concert, a wine festival, or an outdoor movie, you can do it all with the Booth Amphitheater season ticket package. Packages starting as low as $20 per ticket are now available. Tickets are limited, so purchase yours today. Visit www.boothamphitheater.com or call 919-462-2025 for details. Carrie's Booth Amphitheater. Entertainment. Naturally. So school's out, and you're looking for ways to keep your kids entertained and happy. Cary offers camps and programs that appeal to even the most unique imagination. Get the School's Out 411 from the pros. Camp was a lot of fun, and I love the teachers. I learned a lot of fun things. I really enjoyed camp, camp because I made lots of new friends. I love it when the kids come to class and they have so much fun. I love making new friends. The town of Cary has a 411 when school's out. Registration starts February 2nd. Camps fill quickly. We're back in this final segment of Carry Matters. We want to talk about what's happening in July and how you can be involved and included. Gil, what do you have? Well, this month we have only one regularly scheduled council meeting on Thursday, July 26th. We also have two work sessions scheduled. Our first work session is set for Tuesday, July 3rd, and our second is Tuesday, July 31st. One of the things we'll, we will discuss on July 3rd is the applications we've received for the council vacancy that occurred with the June 30th resignation of Julie Robeson. On July 31st, we'll be reviewing recommendations for how to proceed with our comprehensive plan an update. Okay. As a reminder, the Town of Cary offices are closed on July 4th, but there will still be plenty of folks working on the many Independence Day celebrations around our community, including the one by the Cary Town Band at the Sir Toma Amphitheater and, of course, the big 4th of July celebration at Coca Booth Amphitheater. 
I, yes, you'll definitely see me there. I never miss the fireworks. Well, that's it for this edition of Carrie Matters. We appreciate your watching and hope that what we've shared has been of interest. Please let us hear from you. Your time is important and we want this show to be of value to you as we work to bring you, our citizens, closer to your government. Thanks for watching and remember, help keep Cary clean, green, and beautiful by volunteering for our Spruce program. And as always, thanks for choosing to call Cary home. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.